Hello citizens and welcome back. In today's video I will be continuing our series on the dynamic economy by talking about data running and how it will affect the economy and player actions. As always, if you like this video, sacrifice a like and a comment to the YouTube algorithm and subscribe for more. And here's a shout out to our amazing patrons for their support of the channel and the armory. In case you didn't know, the armory is a tool I made to help Star Citizen players find FPS weapons and gear in the verse. Check it out at the link in the description. Before we get into the mechanics of data running, I think we should talk about why data running is important and how it affects the economy. We have to understand that real-time communications are very limited in their reach. We actually don't have to look too far for a real-life example. The communications round trip to the moon is about 2 seconds and we consider the moon a fairly short distance away. If we look further, for example, the communications round trip to Mars is 5 to 20 minutes depending on the relative position of the planet to Earth. This makes real-time communication very difficult if not impossible, since we are limited by our use of radio signals and laser beams which are limited by the speed of light. And this problem is the primary driver for data running profession in Star Citizen. Of course, Star Citizen assumes some degree of technological advancement, but long-range communication is still a problem. However, in Star Citizen, faster-than-light travel is possible and available. I believe that in the lore, long-range communications are handled with quantum probes that download information from comma rays, then quantum travel to the destination to deliver the data. If this is true, it's probably not the fastest possible solution. That's where data runners come into play. You could roughly split the data running profession into three brackets. Data runners, surveyors and data brokers. Data runners simply deliver the data from point A to point B similar to the existing delivery missions. These missions would emerge from the need to transfer data faster than the existing communications network can provide. So I imagine that these would be time limited missions and probably the first iteration of data running to be implemented. Surveyors take a more active role in generating data. These players and quanta will actively scan areas for information on resource locations or trade information or try to hack comrades to intercept communications. This is where the concept of active and passive information gathering comes into play, but we will talk more about that once we get into the technical details. And finally, data brokers. As the name suggests, they buy data from surveyors and sell it to the interested parties essentially forming the middleman in the information trade. Next, let's take a look at the types of data we can expect to run. I think we can expect trade-related data generated by the individual trading locations, then data about resource locations, and then various mission-related data, for example for bounty hunting. This is a very simple distinction, but I think it should be enough for now. The next issue is how to generate and obtain data. Well, as mentioned before, mission-related data will be likely implemented first, as it will allow CAG to develop and test data running related mechanics. The basic idea is to have a delivery mission, but instead of cargo you will be delivering some data. This could be done by physically picking up the data medium or uploading the data to your ship. We will cover this part in a minute. It should also be possible to download publicly available data from various locations. For example, if you're stopping at a trading location, you should have an ability to download the current price information so you can sell it later. This would serve as the basis of sandbox data running and the trade information network. With this implemented, we could go back to how trade data is presented to Quanta and the player and start limiting their knowledge based on information available as we mentioned in one of the previous videos. Let's look at an example. Let's say that every major trading hub like Lorville, New Babbage or Orison have somewhat up-to-date information on trading locations on their nearby moons since these are within the range of real-time communications. But they lack real-time information about locations further away or other star systems. This creates a demand for such information, which is where data runners come into play. As a data runner, your goal would be to visit the trading location, download the data and then deliver it to a distant trading hub for sale. The sale price would be determined by the distance, time since the information was last updated and the time since you downloaded it. More up-to-date data is always more valuable. This would create a supply and demand as well as a time factor to this gameplay loop, rewarding those who can deliver as much data as possible in a short time. At the same time, it would give fast, dedicated ships like the Herald an advantage. This information can then be made available to players and Quanta for some price. So that more or less covers data running. But what about surveying? Miners and salvage operators need to know the locations of resources from somewhere. Of course they could scout themselves, but buying this information from someone would be a lot faster. 
So let's say that another player or quanta flies around the surface of a planet looking for ore deposits. This information then can be sold to a broker from whom the miners then can buy this information. Now, this would require a small rework of how ore deposits work. Once the deposit is discovered by a surveyor and the location is logged, the game has to remember that there was a certain deposit in that location so that the information remains valid for some amount of time. As far as I know, this is not the case right now. At this point we can get into active versus passive information gathering because I think both will be implemented at some point. As you're flying through the verse, your ship records various data about your surroundings, mostly related to where you are and what your sensors can detect. This will mostly include other ships and sometimes points of interest or ore deposits. This information could also be valuable and it would be interesting if CAG gave us a way to either use it for decision making or to sell it for some small price. On the other hand, active information gathering involves you actively scanning for contacts and then further scanning any results. This gives you information about deposit composition, detailed information about points of interest or salvage materials. Now, CAG have stated that ships will have limited data capacity. This will probably apply only to the results of active scanning and data involved in data running. It will be very interesting to see how CAG implement this gameplay loop, at least in terms of surveying. I believe that the most likely approach will be that players will scan ore deposits or salvageable wrecks, then have the option to save this information into the ship's databanks, and then either pass this information to other players or sell it to a relevant data broker. If the data is sold to a player and this player decides to navigate to the location, they will find the same ore deposit. This will require the game to store its location and properties, but this is likely already possible with persistent entity streaming. If the data is sold to an NPC broker, I think the most likely outcome is that the mining mission is generated in that area with the deposit parameters similar to what was found. But that's only speculation and really depends on what mining missions will look like. And with that being said, that's all for tonight. What do you think? Will data running be a relevant profession? Do you own any data running ships? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching, fly safe and I will see you in the verse.